Hello, welcome to IF, videos on society, politics and people. We post new content every week, hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video again. Cash, Wonga, Greenbacks, Dinero, Wedge and Benjamins. Money is known by many names, it's something we all know about. Some have too much, others have too little and for some it's considered the root of all evil. But what if it was to go away? In a world of ever increasing digital currencies and their surge in popularity, we ask what a cashless future may look like and what the implications may be. Would it be a paradise of Star Trek, everyone working for the betterment of humanity rather than personal gain or could it be a completely controlled hell? devoid of equality and freedom. How much does this thing cost? The economics of the future are somewhat different. You see, money doesn't exist in the 24th century. No money? You mean you don't get paid? The acquisition of wealth is no longer the driving force in our lives. We work to better ourselves and the rest of humanity. Money in one form or another has been with us since the dawn of civilization. It has come in many shapes and forms. The Chinese used bronze to trade in 1100 BC. The modern idea of money in the form of coins has been with us since the time of Rome. Early metal money came in varying forms. It was often made from precious metals and used in conjunction with the barter system. The first known true currency was created by King Aliyites in Lydia, now part of Turkey, in 600 BC. The use of paper as currency began in China and was carried to the west by Marco Polo. Paper money started out as simple IOUs written on notes on which the person carrying this paper was promised an amount of something in exchange. This practice really took hold during the time of the Crusades. The Knights Templar would furnish travellers with these early credit notes. The traveller could then cash them in when arriving at another Templar stronghold at their destination. This practice led to much of the great wealth acquired by the Templars and we can still see it and their influence today in the old capital of the Templar Empire, the City of London. The City of London is a city and county that contains the historic centre and the primary central business district of London. It is separate to London and holds a lot of power even today. It has been a den of secrets for hundreds of years and may be worth a look into with another video. If you'd be interested in seeing that, let me know in the comments below. So back to cash. Money did not stop evolving and the introduction of the first digital currency came with the creation of credit cards in 1946. John Biggins pioneered this idea with the Charge It card. This was a real turning point in the history of money. For the first time people trusted zeros and ones instead of gold and silver and paper promises. 1999 saw the first mobile banking introduced, this in conjunction with the release of the first smartphones. Today 81% of people use their phones to bank and this figure grows year on year. Digital is here to stay. In 2014 things really blew up. Contactless payment had been with the world since 2008 but as smartphone technology grew more secure, more and more people adapted to this payment method. The idea of money being a form of data had taken hold. The rise of cryptocurrencies at this time also helping to cement the idea in people's minds. Now money is created, traded and exchanged all the time with no physical presence except the device it is being transmitted from. So we all see the positives of this new way of handling money, its convenience, no need to carry around bulky cash, less chance of having it stolen and the fact that it is an even medium of exchange. It would seem the world has embraced these new methods. So are there any downsides? Some experts have reported their fears of the world becoming a two-tier urban system. In this system those with the lowest incomes could become separated from the mainstream digital commercial infrastructure. 
due to their dependency on traditional forms of currency. This due to them not being able to afford to purchase the relevant technologies they would need to keep up with the pace of development. This could cause a split in society as areas divide along the lines of the currency they use. The development of smart cities with the latest and greatest devices at everyone's disposal and a second class using only cash. The next problem is power and control this may afford to the creators of these currencies. As the old saying goes, he who controls the money controls the world. Our current technological snooping prowess and the ease at which big data manipulation can occur could lead to speculation and manipulation of currency values. Something we have seen recently with cryptocurrencies employing the old pump and dump strategy. Algorithms have been created to monitor suspicious activity but could this morph into a day when the health records of an overweight person would lead to a situation in which they find that any sugary drink purchases they make are declined? And the line may not stop at diet. What about the media we consume? Could ideas that do not conform be shunned and blacklisted? Purchases banned by the currency providers? The government also has a huge stake in a cashless society. We see politics and big business becoming ever more interconnected. Could we see this relationship between business and government change into a system of totalitarian control? The government allowing the companies free reign as long as data is shared and the algorithm works to support the government narrative. The US government has used similar methods to limit the freedom of its citizens before. They made it increasingly difficult for companies to operate or individuals to transact by adding compliance hurdles for banks wishing to deal with certain clients. They did this by making it too expensive to deal with these certain clients. This sending a signal to the banks that they should not deal with this client type. The government can then keep that company or person out of the banking system. In a cashless world you would become a persona non grata. That thought is very scary. 1984 Orwellian control? However it could be the tip of the iceberg. If you are found to be a subversive or hold views or a lifestyle that counters the government could they with a push of a button delete your finances? What could you do? And this raises another issue. What about those that are experiencing hard times? Homeless, destitute people often survive through begging. How could they beg for a digital currency? This problem has begun to rear its head today. In Amsterdam, homeless people selling street magazine Z, the Dutch equivalent of the big issue, struggle to find customers still using cash. Z trialed card payments by giving a dozen of the city's vendors Isitel readers back in 2013 but the method was deemed too cumbersome. With the likes of Bitcoin showing no sign of slowing in popularity some may argue that they are the antidote to this scenario. The problem is that they need connectivity. This connectivity could become subject to monitoring, control of Bitcoin coming via metadata and behavioral analysis. We should be careful of this drive towards cashless living. It is being pushed as a great freedom and a convenient method of transaction but could be a means to our enslavement. If a dystopian future awaits us is uncertain. There is the real fear that governments may find the power irresistible. The controlling of the everyday behavior of their citizens simply because they can or because of some perceived outside threat. If we move into this world and say goodbye to cash could we ever get the freedom it affords us back? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video please give it a share. If you're a fan of cash hit that like button and remember to hit that red button and ring that bell to get alerts when a new video is posted. Thanks for watching until next time.